right, here we go. Matthew chapter 7, or 6, Matthew chapter 6 in your Bibles. Charlie, Pastor Price picking on you, but I'm glad you're still with us. Because you know why? When I was here last time, you guys were in that boating accident. Remember that? Yeah. I don't know how you can forget about that. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. So I'm glad you're still around. So he that was pretty. From that. Say what? He almost died from that. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. It is good to be back here. It's been, according to our records, it's been about four years wow. uh, since our family. Sometimes it seems longer than that. Sometimes it seems shorter than that. Um, but long uh, enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's fine. Um, but it is good. It's going to be. It's good to see new faces. And good to see old faces. And I always like coming here because you have such a, a wide variety of people. So I, I love, because we're, ha we're starting a church plant in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, where I'm from. And the goal is to get just, it's, it's International Baptist Church. And we just want to get uh, whoever to come. And I always love coming and seeing Pastor Price's burden for uh, whoever uh, to come. And uh, his passion for souls and his faithfulness. And uh, thanks for picking me up. Uh, we're actually... Uh, anybody know Joel? How do you say his last name? Zyla. Zyla. Uh, Joel Zyla from down in Marathon. Yeah. Uh, he's actually going to meet me at Miami Airport tomorrow, and we're flying out uh, to Peru. And I, according to him, that's the first time he's been out of the country when he can actually remember it. Uh, so if you, if you pray, if you think about it while we're gone, uh, yeah, pray for me. I've been out of the country many times. But pray for Joel. I want this to really impact him. Sure. Uh, as a college-age student, uh, I got right with God uh, on a mission trip when I was a senior in high school. So this is a great opportunity for him to draw close to the Lord. Maybe the Lord even call him to do something with missions. I would love to see that. Uh, so you pray pray for him. I'm just going really to, to be in the prison and then mentor him and, and try to train him as much as possible. So again, thank you. The price is the food tonight. I ate too much. I ate too much before I'm going to preach. Makes up for Chick-fil-A. That's true. Uh, Chick-fil-A was a little disappointing today. But anyways, a whole other story. But thank you so much. even has some ice cream there. Thank you, Mrs. Bryce, for taking care of us. Appreciate it. Thank you for letting me stay at your house, too. Matthew chapter 6. How long do you normally go? On? About an hour and a half. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's my other sermon. This two is about hours two hours. Summer. <laughs> All right, well, I can do that. <laughs> good. Yeah. Matthew 6. Let's just read. I'm going to read verses 33 and 34. As far as my notes go, I don't believe I ever preached this here, but if I did, just act like you never heard it. So it'll be good. Matthew 6, 33 and 34 says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the stand that it takes upon the Word of God. Oh, Lord, thank you for the prices and their faithfulness. Lord, after four years, it's still doing the same thing. Going out the highways and hedges and compelling people to come in and giving them the gospel and discipling and teaching and mentoring. Uh, they're giving and spending and being spent for you. So Lord, thank you uh, for their faithfulness to you. Thank you for the lives they've impacted right here, even the people I'm speaking to. Uh, Lord, thank you for uh, their effectiveness. And Lord, thank you for the Word of God that we get to look at tonight. Lord, we wouldn't be here uh, we wouldn't uh, have, really have a job tonight. We wouldn't have any reason to be here without being centralized around your truth. So, Lord, thank you for the life-giving truth that you have for us tonight. Lord, if we need to be revived tonight, would you do that? Perhaps, Lord, tonight there's some people that just need to be encouraged. Thank you for what you've done with this passage, even with me today. Lord, thank you for encouraging my heart, reminding me of who you are. And I pray that tonight... Lord, really, that's all we want tonight is to be reminded of who you are, to be revived and fresh in our spirit so that we can serve you even better. Lord, would you give me boldness? Would you give me clarity as I speak? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. There was a guy one time who, uh, he wanted to, he worried so much that he decided to hire somebody to do his worrying for him. So he hired this guy, and uh, the guy that he hired was going to get a salary of $200,000 per year. It's pretty good. 
After the man accepted the job, his first question to his boss was, so, uh, boss, where are you going to get the $200,000 to pay me every year? His boss said, don't ask me, that's your worry. You, you take care of those things. So, and this is for you, Taj, okay, this next joke is for you, since you're all about puns, right? So a man went to his psychiatrist and said, sometimes I think I'm a teepee, and sometimes I think I'm a wigwam. The psychiatrist said, well, your problem is you're too tense. I heard you up here and I was practicing, <laughs> working, working on my own real quick. So, to test, some of you guys are like, I don't understand. You just ask how I got to go explain it to you, okay? Now, two tenths, okay? Uh, not T E N T S, but two tenths, T E N S. It's many times where you and I can get. Now, I'm not just talking to ladies tonight, man. Don't just tune me off and say, hey, uh, uh, well, he's talking about being tense and, and being anxious. Okay, that's just, no, it's, I needed this this afternoon as I was studying. Because what we're going to talk about tonight is really the word worry, the problem of worry. Now, sometimes the, the problem of worry can be kind of like a bad cold, all right? Uh, we, we, uh, we know what the symptoms are. We've always had, we've had it before. We know it's debilitating. We know it's contagious. But like most men, especially, we're too proud to admit that we actually have it. Sure. I mean, you ever been sick and you don't want to admit that you have it? Okay, it's the same thing with worry. Because we want to be big and we want to be, uh, we want to be strong and we don't want to confess that we have a little bit of worry. I mean, have you ever been anxious for where your next paycheck is going to come from? I think we've all been there. You know the word worry comes from an old German word meaning to strangle or choke. And if you think about it in your own life, when you get to this point, when you start to worry, it strangles and chokes you of the joy and peace of living in a sweet walk with the Lord because that's all you can think about. It strangles and chokes you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this passage in Matthew chapter 6. And, and really, as I was praying about it, uh, knowing that you guys are talking through prayer on Wednesdays, is that correct? Um, this, I hope, kind of goes and fits in with what you're talking about when it comes to prayer. We're going to talk about worry tonight. Here's the first thing we're going to talk about. Worry's description. What is worry? What is worry? Well, in my own definition, here's what I say worry is. A wor worry is a fear of the future. Do you know that nobody ever worries about the past? Do you realize that? Nobody worries about the past. What you worry about is the consequences from the past catching up with you in the future. But you're not worried about the past, you're worried about tomorrow, you're worried about next month, you're worried about two years from now, you're worried about the future, being anxious about the future. And here's what uh, Jesus says here in Matthew chapter 6, let's start in verse 25, it says this, Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than me, and the body than raiment. You know he says this phrase over and over again, take no thought, take no thought. It's in verse 27, it's in verse 28, take no thought, take no thought. It has the idea of uh, being careful or being anxious. You remember uh, in Luke chapter 10, remember uh, Mary and Martha, and Martha was scurrying about the house, and she was uh, trying to impre really impress Jesus and do all these things, and, say, and she said, Jesus, why isn't Mary helping me? And Jesus says, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. That's the idea. Troubled, anxious. And uh, you know this verse, Philippians chapter 4 says this, be careful for what? Nothing. Nothing. Don't be anxious about anything, troubled about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Luke chapter 12, which is a kind of a parallel passage to this, says this, Seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink, neither be you of doubtful mind. The word doubtful in that verse kind of gives us the idea, I think it's meterizomai, it's the idea of a ship that's out on the ocean that's being tossed to and fro. Have you ever been in a position in your life when your mind is going back and forth? Oh God, you're going to supply, you're going to provide. Okay, everything's okay. The next few minutes, but Lord, whoa! I don't know if you, whoa! And you're going up and down and up and down. It's the idea, Jesus says, don't be of doubtful mind. Be a doubtful mind. You know, Corey Ten Boom, the famous missionary, said this Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, it empties today of its strength. It's a good quote. A guy named Walter Kelly said this Worry is wasting today's time to clutter up tomorrow's opportunities with yesterday's troubles. Try to wrap your mind around that quote. <laughs> So here's the thing that in, in Jesus' time, here's what the thing that people were worried about. First of all, they were worried about food. Okay? Now, 
Today, I was not worried about food. I was at the Price's house, amen? Chick-fil-A, I was a little worried. And just so you know, we went to Chick-fil-A and they gave me a piece of chicken that was like this big, okay? I was really disappointed in my favorite restaurant. But we're not worried about, in our present day, we're not worried about food. Well, in Bible times, if there was a drought and the crops couldn't grow, they're worried about food. They had, that's how they got their food. And Jesus says, look, listen, you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you should put on. Is the life more than meat and the body than raiment? And then he gives an illustration. Look at verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Have you ever gone out in the morning and seen a bird on a power line going like this? I, I mean, I haven't. I don't know about you. But, I mean, the, the bird is not waiting for worms from heaven. Okay? But... The, word, uh, the, the bird does go out and actually has to work and find the worm to feed his young or to feed it herself, whatever. It still has to work. So Jesus is say, not saying this, well, don't worry about food. Just kind of sit around and the food will come to you and everything's okay. Jesus said that there's a difference between conscientious responsibility where you've got, you've got to do your part. There's a difference between that and just constant fear and anxiety. Jesus said, look, the birds, every day they go out, I take care of them. I mean, they eat. You don't see birds starving to death, do you? Because God, in His incredible power, still feeds them. Now, the other thing they're worried about is worried about life. Okay, look with me at verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, we were talking about basketball players before... The, the message before the service. Okay, I still am of the opinion that Michael Jordan is the best basketball player ever. Anybody here with me? Thank you, Pastor Price. We don't agree on phones, but you agree on that, okay? So that's good. And uh, Michael Jordan's still the best. You know, I watched the video on him one time, and it said, they said in that video, actually Michael Jordan said, that at some point he actually hung by a chin-up bar to try to make himself taller. Try to stretch himself out. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, just, <laughs> so you kids don't do that. It doesn't work. Now, obviously Jesus says here, which of you by taking thought or being anxious can add one cubit unto stature? Now some people think that, yes, he's talking about actually growing or getting taller. You can't add a cubit unto your stature by worrying about it. But other people think that he's talking about life and prolonging your life. Well, either one is true. Now, for in, in today's day, Okay, we have, and I'm please, don't be offended at this, okay? If there's going to be any part of this message you're offended at, don't be offended at that, this, okay? We have exercise routines. We have gluten-free. We have dairy-free. We have sugar-free. We have caffeine-free. We have taste-free. It's basically all that. <laughs> it's taste-free, okay? My wife does some of that stuff. I just, it all just tastes like cardboard to me, okay? I, I don't do that. But why, why do we do that? It's so we can prolong our life. Now, there's... There's some lady, I forget where it was, and I wasn't even planning on saying this, but she just came to my mind. I, I forget what country she, she's in. She's like a hundred and something years old, and they said, how did you live so long? Well, I ate chocolate every day. Did you see that? She ate chocolate every day. Well, everybody has an opinion on how to live long, okay? I drink Dr. Pepper. I'm probably going to die next year. All right, so whatever. We can't be anxious. Now, there is being a good steward, okay? There is that. But you and I can't add life to our years just because we want to. Okay? We can't say, well, you know what, I'm going to live to 85, and that's what I'm going to get to, and then I'm going to be... We can't do that. God is the one that allows us to get to that point, and God has a set time for all of us to be here. Now, we don't just eat unhealthily like I do, but you, you take care of yourself. Jesus is saying this, you cannot add either growth or years. So why are you worried about it? You know, one man said this, you can worry yourself to death, but you can't worry yourself to life. And there are even some things, some physical problems that come through worry. What's the third thing they're worried about? They're worried about clothing. Look with me at verse 28. Jesus says again, Why take ye thought? Why are you anxious? Why are you worried for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, listen, open your eyes and look at the fields. Look at the flowers. They, okay, the bird can work. 
And Jesus, going back to the birds, Jesus said, the birds can work, but they have nowhere to store it up. They have nowhere to, to keep it. You don't, you, you don't go to a bird's nest and see a storage of worms. Okay, You don't see that. You don't see them stacked up in different files. And, okay, you don't, they have to get it every day. But he's saying here, the flowers can't even work. They can't go out and find work. Okay, The flowers can't work. Jesus is the one that causes them to grow. I was watching something the other day about all of the plants in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park up about where we're from. And there's hundreds of different plants, and I was fascinated by all the different flowers. There's actually one flower that its seed, it actually shoots its seed. Like, talking about a big one, just shoots it like a few feet. That was impressive. They showed it in slow mo. Who, who, who takes care of those flowers? God does. God does. And he says this, if I clothe the grass or the field, the flowers of the field, how much more important are you? How much more important are you? And he says this, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon did all, I mean, he made all these uh, friends, he did all this work, and even him, he did all this work. And yet he may have looked nice, he may have had all this fancy stuff, but the flowers don't do anything. They just, God grows them. God grows them. Here's the second thing, okay? Worry's dependence. So what was worry? Worry was a fear of the future, being anxious, concerned about the future. Worry's dependence is one of two things. You're either going to put faith in the flesh, or you're going to rest in the faithfulness of the Father. You're either going to place faith in the flesh, or you're going to rest in the faithfulness of the Father. Here's what he says. Look at verse 26. Again, going back to the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Now don't miss this next phrase. Are ye not much better than they? Matthew chapter 10, verse 31 says this. First, actually, let's see, let's start at verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your Father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. When I was a kid, I got a BB gun for Christmas or my birthday or something. Boy, I shot a lot of animals. <laughs> Kids don't do this, okay? But uh, shot a lot of animals in, in Florida. Actually, it was Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, I remember I shot a bird one time, and uh, my dad told me, don't shoot any more birds. You know what I did? Went out and shot another bird. But you know what? I was broken. I was convicted by it. Because when that bird hit the ground, I felt awful. I felt awful. So don't disobey that kids, okay? Obey your parents. But when, I, when you know that bird hit the ground, it may seem like a simple illustration, but that bird hit the ground, you know who knew about it? God. He knew about it. He says this, aren't you? Are the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He knows each one. And he says this, aren't you more valuable than sparrows? They're birds. You see, our problem with our relationship with God is that our perspective on our value before a, our Heavenly Father is so often skewed. We don't understand the incredible value we are to God. Not in ourselves because we're somebody or we're special, but because God loves us so much He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. And if He's going to die for us, can He not just simply clothe us, feed us, Take care of our every needs. He says this, You're much more valuable than birds when they hit the ground. I know you. Trust me. Trust me. You're much more valuable than these birds. He says, Oh, you of little faith. Our value before God. There's, there was a lady, I believe this was during the slavery time, and uh, she, uh, she worked, I, I'm not exactly sure about what time what it is, but she worked with an employer and uh, her employer always noticed that she was always happy, always joyful, always had a sweet spirit. And so he finally came up to her and said, uh, he called her Jack. Her real name was Mrs. Jackson. She, he said, Jack, what makes you so happy all the time? I never see you sad. I never see you crying over anything. What's the secret of your joy? I love what she says. She said, I have no money to lose, so I never worry about losing nothing. What little furniture I have at home has all been given to the Lord. So if it gets stolen or burned up, the Lord done burned up His own stuff. He never burned up nothing of mine. And then I has a big healthy body, and if I get sick and dies, I was going right to be with Jesus. So I never worry about that. I just assume that would come. So you see, I have nothing to worry about, so I just sing. That's good, isn't it? 
She says this, look, everything that I've been given to me, if I lose it or it gets burned up, it's God's anyways. He's the one that's provided for me. He's the one that's taking care of every one of my needs. I don't have to worry about it. He cares for me. He's my heavenly Father. Number three, what is worry's defeat? What is worry's defeat? How do we def defeat worry? Well, you could do like some uh, researchers at Duke University. They're working on a courage pill. <laughs> uh, and they found out already that it reduces anxiety in mice. How do you study if it reduces anxiety? You know those mouse have a lot of problems. They do. they got to figure out how to get in the houses and stuff. Okay, that's so dumb. That's dumb. A courage pill. Or you can do what Jesus says. It's Jerry. It's good. It's good. I like that. It's courage pill. Look at verse 31. He says this, Therefore take no thought. I think we've seen that phrase a few times. Yeah. Saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So again, in this passage, Jesus over and over and over again says, Take no thought, take no thought's command. Don't be worried, don't be anxious, don't be careful about food, clothing, whatever it is. And then, here, here's, here's what Jesus doesn't do. He doesn't say, okay, Charlie, don't take thought. Good, see you later. Whoa, well, how do I, what, what do I? Don't, don't be worried, don't be fearful. Okay, y'all have a good day. What does Jesus do? He gives us, how do we take care of, of our worry, our anxiety, our fear. It's this. He says in that verse, verse 33, he says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. So here's his solution. Jesus says you focus on seeking the kingdom of God, and everything down here will be taken care of. Boy, did I need that reminder today. As we go to Peru, Right? Focus on the eternal, and God will give you the temporal. If you want to put it that way. Focus on serving God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving Him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and pursuing holiness and pursuing God, and He takes care of the rest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hudson Taylor said this, Let us give up our work, our plans, ourselves, our lives, our loved ones, our influence, our all right into God's hand. And then when we have given all over to Him, there will be nothing left for us to be troubled about. Just give it all to Him. He says this, Take no, therefore no thought, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. In Jesus' prayer, okay, we call it the Lord's Prayer, I want you to finish this for me, okay? Give us this day our daily bread. You know, one of the ways that we defeat worry is by living eternally day by day. That's it. Living eternally day by day. Now, I don't know about you, but I got a calendar. That's how I live is I got a calendar. I know what's going to be going on, Lord willing, eight months from now, nine months. Everybody's got to prepare and plan but you can't look at that calendar and then take your eyes off the kingdom. Because at that moment, that's when anxiety, fear, worry comes. You keep your mind on the kingdom of God and let Him take care of that. But here's the thing, it's day by day. It's daily. It's daily. Now, there's a in, in 480 B.C., okay, it's a long time ago, uh, there was a Sparta guy, a king, his name was Leonidas, and uh, he went to fight against the Persian troops of Xerxes. You've heard of him. Okay? But he held off Xerxes by doing something that is not normally in a battle plan. All right? So what would happen, and Spurgeon told this story, that uh, Leonidas found out where Xerxes' men were going to be coming through a narrow mountain pass. So I guess maybe some rocks or something. They were going to be coming through that pass maybe one or two men at a time. So what he did, he went to that spot and he picked the guys off one at a time as they came through that narrow mountain pass. Boom, one at a time. One, and that's how they won. <laughs> it's a good illustration. Sometimes if you and I would really understand everything that's coming our way, we'd be so overwhelmed. Mm. 
But God gives us one at a time. One at a time. Take things one day at a time. You guys know that you know this verse. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. Now, other places in Scripture, this can mean to lack, be without, decrease, or have a need. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be without, decrease, be lacking, have a need. If you think about it this way, or Psalm 34, 10 says this. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want anything, not have a need for anything. Think about it this way. As you sit here tonight, do you realize that right now you don't have any needs? Think about it that way. That every need you have right now is being met. All of it is being met. Now, if I were to take prayer requests, which is what we do, we pray for each other, we would say, I need $200. Okay? I need to take care of this. I need my car to be fixed. I need this. I need this. And in our vernacular, we know what you're talking about. But when it comes time to God, we have, we have no need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not have a need. I don't have anything right now that I need. Because everything I need right now, He's already supplying. Do you need something? He's going to supply it. Do you need something tomorrow? It'll be supplied at that moment, at the time you need it. See, what we do is we get so focused on putting God in our calendar, in our time period, and say, God, I have a bill that needs to be paid in two weeks, and then money hasn't come yet. God, where are you? I mean, it, it's getting close. we I got a week left. And God says, wait a minute. Are you in charge, or am I in charge? One at a time. One at a time. Taking care of those. We don't have a need because He's taking care of it. Now, you remember the Israelites? The Israelites, when they gathered manna, remember that story when they were supposed to go out every day and they gathered this manna? I believe manna was probably Chick-fil-A. I think that was probably... <laughs> but they probably had a lot more than I had today. So, I think it would be more like quail. About no, it was, it was Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, so they went out and they gathered this every morning. And Oh, this, I got you. I didn't get that. Exodus 16 says this, And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over... And he that gathered little had no lack. So God was supplying their need through this manna that they gathered. And by the way, they had to gather it every day. And then they had to store it up for the Sabbath day. But they couldn't get extra for normal days. And this really caught my attention this afternoon as I was looking at it. It says this, He that gathered little had no lack. So let me talk to you in your situation. Or do you have a little bit Say, God, I just don't have much. I don't have a lot of money right now. I don't have this. I need this. And, well, have you had anything to lack? Have you had any lack? No. In this passage, he that had a little had nothing to lack. Had nothing that he needed more. And he that gathered much, they had, a, they had plenty. They had everything they needed. The Bible says in the next few verses, they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Listen, here's what we have to be reminded of. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yeah. The Bible says in Psalm 50, if I were hungry, I would tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. We've got to be reminded of who our God is. And in the verse recently that came to my attention again is, for with God, nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. I mean, think about uh, what we would call 11th hour deliverances. Remember Abraham and Isaac takes that knife? Can, could God have waited any longer? I don't. I think he waited as long as he possibly could and then said, no, 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 that's it. Don't do it. Many times it comes to the position in our, in our life where God is growing our faith and He's got to wait to increase our faith to make us more like Christ so that we depend more on Him and rest in Him even in the 11th hour. 11th hour. Remember the story of Elijah and the widow woman at Zarephath? Okay, here's what happened. Uh, 1 Kings 17, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail to have a need until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. It never failed. It never ran out. She never had a need because God supplied it. You know, many times what we do is we find ourselves, maybe I'm just weird like that, this, if you're not worried about something now, you worry about something that you're going to have something to worry about. 
Are you with me? <laughs> if you're not, if you're not worried, if you're not fearful about something now, then you're like, whoa, what's going to come down the road? I should probably be worried about what's going to happen next month because I really need to have something to worry about and fear about because I just need to worry about something. <coughs> it's kind of like this this guy, Thomas Carlyle. Uh, he lived from 19, 1795 to 1881. Right? He went. He was a Christian. Then he went to the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, uh, which our family was actually in Scotland this past summer. And then he lost his Christian faith. Well, he was a famous writer, and that's what he was known for. But in his apartment, he had built, in his apartment, he built a soundproof chamber so that he could write, he was a famous writer, so he could write without all this noise. Well, somehow still, even in that soundproof chamber, his neighbor had a chicken. And here's what, how the story goes. That several times in the night, and in the early morning, the chicken would do his thing. I mean, just as loud as possible. Well, Mr. Carlyle was kind of angry and talked to the owner of the chicken. He said, the man pointed out to Mr. Carlyle that the chicken only crowed three times in the night. And after all, that couldn't be such a terrible annoyance. Mr. Carlyle said, but sir, if you only knew what I suffer waiting for the chicken to crow. <laughs> That's how we live many times. We're waiting for the next bad thing to happen. We're waiting for it to come. Why, are we, why, why do we see our God like that? We're His children. He is our Heavenly Father. Why do we have anything to worry about? You know, grace is for today. It's not for tomorrow. You know, right now, you don't need grace for tomorrow. You know what you need grace for? Today. Today. God's grace will be sufficient tomorrow because the Bible says God's grace, what? Is sufficient. Present tense is right now. That's when you need it. Let me, let me finish with a couple of stories and then we'll be done. There's a guy by the name of Bolstrode Whitlock. And some of these stories I tell you, I have no idea who these guys are, okay? But uh, he was in Oliver Cromwell's, uh, one of his soldiers. And uh, he was headed to Sweden in 1653. But he was really disturbed and was not resting very well. Uh, because of some of the stuff that he was going through and the meeting that he was about to have. And so there was a servant that was with him, because Mr. Boltlock is obviously a pretty important person. So the servant was with Mr. Whitlock. and He found out that his master couldn't sleep that night, and so he said, Pray, sir, will you give me leave to ask you a question? Mr. Whitlock said, Sure. He said, Pray, sir, do you not think that God governed the world very well before you came into it? Mr. Whitlock said, undoubtedly. And pray, sir, do you not think he will govern it quite as well when you are gone out of it? He said, certainly God will. He said, then, sir, pray, excuse me, but do not you think you may trust him to govern it quite as well as long as you live in it? And that's good. <laughs> to that, Mr. Whitlock fell right to sleep. Because of that truth. Listen, before you came along, God governed the world just fine. Took care of every need that anybody else had. And when you leave this world, he'll take care of it just the way. And while you're here, He'll still take care of it. He'll still take care of you. Because if you're His child, you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you're His child. How many of you have ever heard this name? And uh, you'll know it after I tell it to you. Lena Sandel. Anyone ever heard of her? You'll know who she is in just a second. She was born in 1832 in Sweden. Her dad was a pastor, but her, I think she herself uh, had some physical problems. And uh, she was kind of weak. So she spent a lot of time with her dad in his study. And uh, so it, when she was 26 years of age, she went with her dad on a journey to Gothenburg. right? But on the way, they were in a tragedy when her father actually fell overboard the ship they were on and drowned right in front of her eyes. Now, we don't know if the song that she wrote came from this, but I think it would be very applicable to the situation that she was in. And you know this song. Day by day. And with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment. I have no cause for worry or for fear. He whose heart is kind beyond all measure gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly as part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. She said, Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, 
that I lose not faith, sweet consolation, offer me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, ere to take us from a father's hand. One by one, the days, the moments fleeting, till with Christ the Lord I stand. Father, thank you tonight that you are a never-changing Father to us. Lord, you are so good. We looked at several scriptures, Lord, that talk about us not having any wants or anything that we need. And before you, Lord, many times we doubt you. We get so focused on our little circle of problems, of fears, of anxious things going on. Lord, there are people here in this building that have burdens that they are carrying. Lord, I pray that being reminded of the Father that we have would be reminded Remind them to take to you all their care because you do care. You said to cast all our burdens upon you. So I pray we would do that tonight. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see anew what a sweet and wonderful Heavenly Father you are. In Jesus' name. Thank you for that very helpful message this evening. And that's what we need. A reminder that God cares for us. And God cares about you. You know, I don't know if anyone's told you today or not, but God loves you very much. And loves you more than you can comprehend. It's amazing when you really come to understand how much God loves you. One of the things that you understand as well is that He loves you more than you know. That's just incredible, isn't it? And uh, don't try to find a reason why. I couldn't figure out why God loves you, uh, but He does. <laughs> that wasn't funny, was it? Let's take prayer requests tonight, shall we?